Hi, this is Shay Veronica. Last night on Linda Moulton Howe, she spoke of the vehicles, the craft, the objects that were being shot out of the sky recently on Earth in our history. She says that even the top brass at the Pentagon refuses to say that they were balloons. They have not identified exactly what it is, what they are, and many pieces of what they alleged was shot down. Those pieces that entered the ocean have not been found. Last night on Linda Moulton Howe, she interviewed a person, a general or someone within the U.S. military who worked at Edwards Air Force Rocket Research Lab. And this person obviously gave a false name, John Smith, but he said that when he was out on patrol, he saw a black, a huge black craft that almost you could not see the sky. You could see the outer edges of the sky when it came down, but it was huge, okay? Huge, like almost a thousand feet in diameter. And he says that when that craft was in the sky, it emitted no sound. It had no, you cannot see a entrance into the craft. It's not as though it had widgets and doors and it didn't have like windows. It was just black stark black and it hovered over the air force base where they were on patrol and while it was there their vehicles did not work the phone when he was trying to call the main office did not work everything goes still everything goes dead and at one point the craft spun it was spinning in the air and when it was rotating in that particular formation that there was like static electricity was emitting and that he felt the guy who was giving the interview to Linda Moulton Howe he said he felt ill and after everything was done and the craft just up in the air just zoom and disappeared everything came back online like his car started to work again and the phone started to work again and he called the office and when they made their report, men in black, <laughs> yeah, men in black came in and told them not to say anything that what they saw, they really didn't see. And if they say anything, that their family would disappear and the guy himself who made the report, he would disappear. And Linda asked him, you mean disappearing mean they will kill you? And he said, yes, that is what they threatened me with. They said that they would I would disappear. No one would know who I am. No one would see me again. I would disappear. So this thing that is happening on earth, it is obvious to many people, millions of people, it is obvious to that we are not alone. We are actually not alone in the universe. Whoever created us, whoever created, whoever created the earth, created other people on other places other places and they're coming to visit they may not want to stay this place has you know wars and people with guns and people who will stab and people who rape you know i wouldn't want to be here if i wasn't stuck here so any intelligent life form that will come here it seems as though they come just to make sure that what happened in japan when the americans dropped two bombs in Japan, in Japan, that that doesn't happen again. When these alien creatures show up, they show up to regulate what the babies here do, with what the sadistic people here do. So when they come to those particular areas in America and Alaska and certain parts of the world, they monitor the toys, the the weaponry that is being developed 
and they can shut it down or they can make sure that it's not that powerful to it affect space time because when they drop a bomb on a certain part of the world it is not only that part of the world it affects so it seems it seems as though whatever we do here that is monumental affects other space time people it seems as though people live all around us above us underneath us we don't see them our our brain and our sight and our senses are not developed are not equipped to see things that are around us we see a fraction we see a fraction of the known world of what is out there we see very poorly your books tell you that that you you go through this earth blind okay it's it tells you everything but the gist of linda moulton house show last night was to interview this john smith at and was it andrew air force base edwards edwards air force base rocket research lab where he talks about a humongous ufo that after he saw it and after he made his report he was threatened not to say anything to the world he's now retired he now feels a little bit more safe to say what he saw and the world is I don't know if the world is better for these types of disclosure. I don't know because I don't see why we would need any government to tell us what we can actually lift our heads and look up into the sky and see. Why would we need the government to say, hey, their craft in the sky, when you can just tilt your head and look up into the sky and you see them, you see craft going zooming across the sky. I, I'm not talking about airplanes. I'm talking about craft. Things that you cannot explain. Things that are tumbling. Things that are spinning. Things that look different. It's all in the sky. Especially you will see these things when the sun goes down. Within a half an hour of the sun setting, if that's what it does. You will see these things in the sky. Almost as though there's a new guard. Like the the... The daytime guard goes away and the nighttime guard comes into view. There are things in the sky. There are things in the sky. And we are not alone in the universe. And the earth may be bigger than they tell us. And the ocean that you see here in the, on the earth, they say there's another ocean underneath this ocean that is bigger than the ocean that is on top of that. What The oceans that you see on the earth, there's an ocean underneath that. Your scientists say, not me, not Sherry Veronica. This is what science says. And if you look at your holy books, you'll probably find it in there too. Whoever wrote the books probably were the aliens who created you and who knew what is what this whole thing is all about. But Linda Moulton Howe's show last night was extremely informative. Extremely informative. We are not th the gist of the whole her whole entire show is we are not alone in the universe and although we may have some toys the toys that we have like our cell phones how you know how do we watch television how we can make calls from one part of the earth to the other part of the earth the fact that we can do that may suggest that our leaders are in contact with extraterrestrials and their their trading technology our country all our leaders are trading with ets for technology and what are our leaders what are your leaders giving the aliens in exchange because it has to be an exchange we're hearing people people Hundreds and thousands of people go missing from the earth every year. I'm, I'm not talking about being murdered. I'm not talking about running away from home. I'm talking about disappearing, gone from the earth. Hundreds of thousands, close to a million people disappear, go away from the earth every year. And no one knows where they are. So some people will suggest that 
aliens are taking people. What do they take them for? Maybe to be slaves on their planet, maybe to eat them, like how you eat chicken and how you eat beef and how, you know, whatever we are, I eat meat. And if, if you eat meat, if you earthlings eat meat, you know, you eat, the, you, you eat yourself. You, you, we're literally eating ourselves. If, if, whether you eat meat or if you eat plant, whatever, it, it, it's here on the earth. And if you take from it, you're, you're part of the earth and you're eating yourself. So if you do that, why shouldn't someone who live on the outskirts of the earth or underneath the earth come up every now and again and pluck one of us, like how you go into the ocean and pluck a, a fish? We could be like fish to some, to some other species. The fact of the matter is, and this is not something that is rumor, the, the Bible itself, all of your holy books talk about extraterrestrial, even your Jesus, even your Jesus was an ET, part human, part God or whatever, wherever he came from, wherever he came from, he was not from the earth. The whole Bible is extraterrestrial when they talk about giants. When they talk about the sons of God coming down to the earth and taking, raping all the women, wh whoever they wanted, they took. So if, if the sons of men came down from the skies and had sex with earth women, what are, what are you? Are you part alien and part earthling? Are, 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 we, are, are our genes, can our genes be traced to extraterrestrials? You know, stop being stupid. Stop burying your head in the sand. There's something going on here that you don't know. You don't even know why you're on the earth. Why are you here? Do you ask yourself these questions? Why are you here? Just to wake up every morning and drink and then go to work and then have sex and then maybe have kids in sin and iniquity and, and, to, and to be slaves and to work and to die. Why are you here? What is the purpose of this life day in and day out doing the same thing. This, what is the purpose? And some people even pump a set to think that they are better than you when they're shitting and pissing just that like you are. Pissing and shitting and smelling bad just that like you do if you don't bathe. Same thing. The only thing that separates you from some other people is little money. Take away the money. They're, they're the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Linda Moulton House show last night I would recommend you watch it. It may put you to sleep. When we, there's an overload of information, you find that your eyes will close down. Your brain just cannot take it. You may go to sleep. So you have to, you have to take her, you know, you, you know, in, in little steps, just little steps to actually sit and watch an entire show because it is heavy. What she tells you is heavy, but what she tells you may be the truth. Any any species that has the power of creation, why would they create something as insipid as this earth and not do better and better and better as it went along? This may be, you know, you know, the first experiment of creation. You I don't know. You don't know. But what I'm saying is that the human creature is something that you don't want to mess around. You don't want to be here if you don't have to be. And if the aliens are coming, I wonder why. Why would it come here? Why? So there's probably some kind of plan for humans because maybe we are part of if we get better, they get better. You know, you know, you know, you have like 10 steps, but you need that first step. You, you, you can't get, get from the bottom floor to the top floor without that elevator. Maybe we're part of that elevator. They need us so that when they start to, you know, progress, that we are part of that stepping stone kind of thing. So maybe we are useful. There is some use for us. But the whole gist of what I am saying to you is we are not alone in the universe and you cannot, as a Christian or someone who has that Bible stuck underneath your arm, you cannot come and say one word about that against that. You cannot because that book that you have underneath your arm. And they said like, oh, oh, over 90% of people on earth believe in a God. You cannot believe in a God and think that what Linda Moulton Howe says is not true cannot be true because even your God says in my father's house are many mansions, many places, many places.
there, there are more creations than the earth. And it seems as though we are at a stage where other creatures are coming to say, Bonjour. This is Chevronica.